fresh off the plane. Well, you say fresh, stale off the plane. Neil Atkinson, Paul Senior doing talking Reds for you on this Monday. Uh, we're going to talk about that game against Manchester United that got played over the weekend. We'll then segue through to have a little bit of a chat about Liverpool's attacking shape and what it says, Paul. Uh, we will talk about Pulisic and the idea that Chelsea may be interested in Chelsea in general are fascinating. And maybe a little bit on Aaron Ramsey as we're sort of sitting here for 15 minutes or so. So buckle up, uh, strap yourselves in, relax. Liverpool against United, Paul, I was I was stunned by the fact that every Liverpool, the extent to which it's fair to say every Liverpool player, even Shiravella, who's now left, yeah. they appear to know the job. Mm. They appear to know not just their job, they appear to know everyone else's job. I th- you know, you're looking at this side and there's a real sort of collective understanding and Klopp's now into his third full season, this will be his third full season, it's his, but he's had that, that period at first. And you sort of think that right you think probably at all levels people know the sort of football that he wants and there was a real relaxation about them. I mean, it's the benefit of having a manager for a long time is that, you know, it is very much his squad he's dealing with, the players he's chosen to deal with, but but more so that I think he's the manager maybe with the clearest, maybe Pep as well, with the clearest identity of how he wants to play football. So we were told what to expect when he first, when he first came to the club and he's now actually delivering on everything that we thought. So I remember going back to that first game against Tottenham and all of a sudden Liverpool had really ramped up, but it seemed so deliberate. But now Liverpool know when to press, they know when to do all sorts of triggers that the manager wants. And it's it's so obvious, even for the new lads, well, this is how we do things, because it's not just the manager having to tell them, it's the players on the pitch. It just all clicks. Yeah. That's what I, I, for me, it's not just the pressure now, it's the, it's the idea more of, you just see players just filling in little areas off the ball. with. with, with when we've got the ball, but they're when they're off the ball. My point is, you know, little just sort of pockets of space that Liverpool are playing. This is this is where this is what you do. This is what we do. Someone goes there. Someone goes there. And to me, it already looks like it's up to a little bit of a level from last season in terms of the fact that the fresher now and all of that mm. sort of thing. Yeah, we've got a clear identity. That that that's that's what's clear for and me. To contrast that with United, and that's not just because it is United. To contrast that with United, I thought was massive. It, Liverpool's Liverpool's attacking plan was crystal clear, whereas United, I didn't have any idea what they were trying to do. I mean, uh, if you want to talk about Man United for a minute, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be playing at Manchester United at the moment, it's horrendous, but Liverpool just seem this big harmonious camp where everyone's got the clear idea, but Manchester United, it's almost like they've got no idea, and, you know, I, I, was, I was looking into what Mourinho was, was saying, and sort of, obviously Liverpool have got a few more senior pros there, but... I know Man United have got a few to come back, but to, to be so diminishing about, about the team that he put out was wasn't right for me. I mean, he's 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 playing games again. It's third season games, isn't it, Mourinho? Um, I, I mean, I, I'm not worried. It's all, it's all good for me. I sort of want him now to stay as long as he can, so it all implodes. Um, but no, on a, from a Liverpool centric point of view, it's I think it's all positive that you can see the likes of Shakiri just come in, have a clear role that everyone seems to it just clicked again, and it's another sign, and that looks like it may just work. For me, the one of the markers on it is, is is Curtis Jones goes and plays half an hour at right back. Mm. Camacho's played an hour at right back in that game and has played at right back throughout the the, the, the sort of the, the, the preseason. And again, you know, the the idea that well you can just sort out playing right back lads, you'll be yeah. you'll fix it. You'll be it shows that, you know, people everyone is switched on and everyone is being switched on by, by what's around them. I think I think Klopp's Obviously, people play, but I, I don't like um, square pegs and round holes. But I think what, what Liverpool are full of is good technical footballers, Curtis Jones, Camacho. The, the, that's not their natural position, but the system's so clear to these lads. They've got a full understanding of what they've got to what they've got to achieve. That if just because they're good footballers, they can go and shine there. You know, James Milner's a good footballer and shined at left back for a year. It's not it's not what he wants to do. But as I said, this this identity and this clear job that everyone's got. It's great, and it's interesting actually that we we seem to be able to ramp her up. I was worried about the, I think just a typical football thing to worry about without having proper knowledge of how much it was affecting. Is when Buvac goes, I'm like, well, how much does that affect mm. what we do in training? But you know, you've had, obviously over the summer you get a bit more access and get to see more of how they're training. And it just looks, everyone looks like they've got a spring in the step. It's good to see Pep and Linda's back, who I know everyone enjoys his sessions. And what I was seeing, you know, I got to see a few clips of when obviously yourselves were there. And it just looks great. It looks like it looks loads of fun. All the sessions look good fun. They don't seem yeah. just like mundane training sessions, you know. No, they do. They do indeed. Um, Paul, one of the things that did come through last night was that Chelsea have been linked to Pulisic, uh, and 
you feel feel like Chelsea are like some sort of transfer lodestone this summer. Mm. The manager came in dead late. There's still question marks around Courtois, around Hazard, around William Kante even was linked to Barcelona. Yeah. They've still got Luis knocking around there. What's the plan with him? You get the impression that when Chelsea start to do bits, whichever direction it's in, if it's Abramovich widening it down, if it's instead them having another big push, you get the impression that when they start, no matter what happens, that's where all the knock-on effects are going to be for everyone. Yeah, I, w- I wonder whether he's either a long-term replacement for Hazard. You know, I don't think Chelsea... Can, can really afford to be losing the best players at the moment. You know, they're not in the Champions League, and if things only get worse, P- Pulisic is a step down from Eden Hazard. I don't know if that's going to be the case in three or four years' time, but as we are now, Eden Hazard is in the bracket of top players in the world, and Christian Pulisic hasn't really had, hasn't set the, the world alight for 18 months. He's a good footballer. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of brand benefits to signing Christian Pulisic. I'm sure he's a huge star in America, but on the field, I'd much rather have Eden Hazard. I I, I wonder whether it could be Willian, or or maybe they're playing the numbers game. Maybe he can see himself with a a, a more fluid false nine from well, three that, Pedro maybe through the middle. Yeah, you, you know you watched a lot of that last yeah. season, Paul and. You know, Mertens was his mm. guy. Uh, he went through the middle of the pitch, and you wouldn't have Mertens down as a conventional sort of no. number nine. But you could see, the, you could see how that was working for him last season, and there was tons and tons of mobility. Absolutely, yeah, uh, and that that could be what he's going for. I could, I could see Pedro having a really big season for Chelsea. You know, he's he's done that for Barcelona in the past. Um, so I, I wonder whether it's not it's not that one's going. Is that he feels he hasn't got the numbers. Morata and Batshuayi maybe aren't, aren't the style he's looking for. So you can imagine he could raise the Pulisic money through the sales of, of them too. But then we're talking again about two more players going onto the market, then there's a knock-on effect there. But sure. I still expect, I, you would think, I would think, Paul, that you know if, if Pulisic does come on the market, I would think Liverpool will definitely have an interest. <laughs> If there's, if there's a price that Liverpool find fair, and it sounds like Bruce Dortmund might be quite happy to sell at the sort of numbers that are uh, being banded around. So say if it's around 65 million, it could it could really ignite something. I know uh, I've got I've got a week left in the gutter uh, <laughs> before Mr. Gutman's back. So uh, yeah, I mean I'll, I'll be absolutely thrilled to get some content out of it. And <laughs> uh, we'll see if that happens. Uh, the other one that was interesting that came up was the idea that Arsenal will be prepared to let Aaron Ramsey go for 30 million. Mm. You wonder if that's a fitness thing. You wonder if this is a manager trying to put a bit of a stamp on. Maybe he hasn't liked what he's seen in pre-season. It's he's such a talented player. Um, the question is getting him on the pitch. There's talk that they he, offered him the captaincy as well, so I'm not quite I'm not quite sure how this how this stands. I wonder whether it's a it's a big contract playing game where Sam will let you go or or you can be captain. It's up to you, but we're not going to let you go. So you sign the contract now, you get to be captain. You don't sign the contract now, we'll sell you. They don't want another Alexis Sanchez situation on their hands where they're going to have to sell to the rivals for very or little. Oxley Chamberlain or Oxley Chamberlain, yeah. So. Um, He's a good player, Aaron Ramsey, and it's someone that I, I I would also be keen on being in the conversation for. But you've got to ask the you've got to ask the question: Is he is he so much better than Genie Wijnaldum? But Genie Wijnaldum's fitness is so much better. Um, he's a good footballer. Though, and he could he can also play a number of positions. He can play six. He can play eight. He, he can play wide right as well. I, I I just don't know whether we would need him, but I, I don't quite fancy Chelsea having him. You know, I, despite the fact that I'm sort of cool with Arsenal having him, I don't want him to go and reignite himself somewhere else because Chelsea were champions 12 months ago and people are, are completely ruling them out and not much has changed. It was a very sort of sour season there under Conte last season uh, and that, that sort of came out the blue, but it's not the first time we've seen this with Chelsea. But we've also seen Chelsea yeah. explode back into being champions and what did they get 90 something points? 93 points 93 points they, they won the title and you know we well, I remember the clock quote where they've won 14 games in the bounce but we're only two points behind once they get a bit of momentum things can click there so I, I don't particularly want to see them buying what I see as good players and Pulisic and, and Ramsey are clearly that as well as Jorginho who I think may may take a bit of time to, to adapt to the Premier League but it's not quite like it used to be, is it? Where no. you see that less and less, where top players from and the also, continent. I know you'll have, you have Kante alongside him. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's that's a nice thing to have alongside you, isn't it? But I, I, I fancy mean you could maybe do a job with Kante alongside us, especially uh, with your right foot, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've just come back to the states. I uh, spoke about that before, and um, we got loads of fabulous stuff over out there. Interview with Andy Robertson, and interview with Jurgen Klopp. You can see you've seen some of the video, I'm sure. Um, it was fab- we had a fantastic time. Thanks to everyone who came to the live shows. Uh, did three, one in Charlotte, one in New York, and one in Detroit, uh, and all three of them 
um, just with fantastic mates. So we couldn't thank people enough for the time, the effort, the support. We also raised some money for North Liverpool Food Banks, which we're really pleased to have done, which will total up. We'll make it be £3,000 in sterling in the end, is what we'll, uh, how this will all sort of work out with exchange rates, etc., etc. That's what it'll be. And I know that uh, Kev over in San Francisco has also said he's going to put some money in as well, so he's a nice fella. So thank him for that. And everyone, as I say, who came down and had a great time. There's been, you know, to bring it back to Liverpool, Paul, you were saying before about the, the sort of good atmosphere around the place. You know, it's it's it can all be when it's sunny in the summer and you're playing nice stuff in pre season. That's the easy time. You know, it's yeah. it's hard for it's harder for the club in general to do the engagement stuff, but it's also becomes more of a grind come October, come November. But I think there is a general desire from Liverpool supporters for the club to ride this wave, to ride the wave of positivity in general, to maybe find bits and pieces of ways to do a little bit more in Liverpool in maybe open training sessions or something like that, but also to acknowledge that they are doing stuff with schools as well. Mm. That there is, it does seem like Liverpool are having a go. The club have certainly got better. It's been, it's been a gripe of mine. It's been a real bugbear for me that, that I see these pre-season tours and it's almost like, it's perceived to be open access to the players, and you know I've, I've lived in this in this city for the best part of thirty years, and never got never got near them. But to be fair to the club, I can see it improving, and I think Klopp was very very open in what what he said about it, where he, he said, uh, you know, we'd we'd like to do it, but you know if we do we do it with a big open training session with fifty thousand people in the ground, it's a bit it's a huge risk compared to with a thousand yeah. people that we've got here, so. I understand the, the risk, but I, I think I think the odd open training session for kids and stuff, but they are doing more with schools. Liverpool and the community, they're not they're not they're not want to blow their own trumpets. You so know, which is almost frustrating at times. Mm. I think mean, people would maybe like them to blow their own trumpet a tiny bit more because I'm, I'm you know we'd happily sort of tell bits of that story as well. Sure. But there's there, there, there's there, we all get to hear of things that are happening is what I'm saying mm. and a lot of it does need to be done behind closed doors for a variety of, of, of reasons around care uh, which is completely understandable but there are things going on yeah of course so it's good I, I, I'll always take um, a positive from the club making progress you know so I understand it's not an easy thing but as long as the, their intentions are good and they're trying then you can't ask for more than that you can't indeed today we're going to do the outfield wrap we're going to be talking about the positivity around the club we're going to be talking about some of the stuff we've talked about today uh, but expanding upon it uh, that show will be recorded in a, well about half an hour after we finish this and should be out about 4pm today free show do share it with people uh, let them know what it is that we're up to and what it is we're talking about we're also going to be doing our review show uh, that will be available as well uh, this evening so both of those will be available, will be out. It was uh, exciting today. this morning, you know, sorry to break your, uh, your rhythm yeah. there, but when you get the email and it's like, Friday show, this was back, this is back, and you're like, ah, oh, the, fo- the footy's back. I was absolutely made up to see some of the names of shows back. Oh, yeah, 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 we are, we are getting right the way back in. Pre-season's nearly finished, uh, you know what I mean? We've all summered well. Uh, the Anfield Raps got out, had stretched its legs, had some decent, decent warm-up games, but the real business starts now. Uh, £5 a month if you want to subscribe.